Yeah, good evening, class. Good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. So, uh, we're starting tonight's class. And, uh, uh, please want everybody to mute yourself. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. So please mute yourself so that we can start. Good evening, Mr. Charles. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, last night we treated um, the requirement gathering, that is requirement elicitation. And it's about gathering requirements, requirements we need to deliver the change, to solve the problem that the company is facing. And uh, we've gathered the requirement. Let's assume we gather the requirement. What is the next thing to do? And that will take us to the topic for today. Now, after gathering the requirements, um, and then you've uh, confirmed the results and the stakeholders, they are happy that uh, what you gathered is uh, what the inputs they, they made. Then the next thing is to look at how to analyze the requirements you gathered. But before requirement analysis, you need to look at how we are going to do the analysis. And that is what we call the um, strategy analysis. You need to look at the strategy uh, you are going to use to analyze your requirements. First, the, 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 strat the strategy analysis we are going to use is going to be based on the, the current state and the future state. And then we look at the risks involved. And then we define the change strategy just like uh, what we've been um, seeing all this why uh, current states, uh, future state and gap analysis, you also say it's something, same thing, similar. So current states understand the business need and how it relates to the way the enterprise functions today. So that is the current state. Then the future state define goals and objectives that will be demonstrated. That will, be, that will demonstrate that the business need has been satisfied and define what parts of the enterprise need to uh, change in order to meet the goal and objectives. So when you analyze the current state, the, the next needs to analyze what is the ideal scenario um, you want the organization to be for them to be happy. So these are what the future state means. And the future state, this holds the high level requirements, what you are going to be implementing. So after then, you need to assess the risk involved, understand the uncertainties around the change, consider the effects those uncertainties may have on the ability to deliver value through a change, and recommend action to address risk where possible. So what is the risk involved? Because when you are implementing a project, there's some risk involved in everything, you need to uh, look at those risks to address them. And then you move to um, change strategy. 
you perform gap analysis. That is a strategy for change between current and future states. Assess options to, for achieving the future states and recommend the highest value approach for reaching the future state, including any transition state that may be required along the way. So these are when, after looking at the current state, the future state, then you look at the risk involved. You know, it's just like um, you are in um, you are in Lagos and you want to go to Abuja. So what are the risks involved Tra uh, traveling by road to Abuja? There's a lot of risk involved. If you decide to travel by air, there's a lot of risk involved. So uh, there is risk involved in any, so that is the risk you need to look at. Then the gap analysis, during the gap analysis, you need to look at all those uh, areas you need to cover all the gaps within you are traveling uh, from one location to another so these are going to be the um, the gap you need to cover in your business for the stakeholders to be happy so when you decide the strategy you are going to use like now we have decide our strategy this is our strategy going forward so the next thing is to move into the um, requirement analysis itself you need to then analyze our requirement the requirement you've uh, gathered and there uh, a requirement analysis the first thing is is specify a model requirement describe set of requirements or design in details using analytical techniques. We need to specify the models you need to uh, use for your requirement uh, analysis. There are so many techniques. At this point, this one you need to choose a technique that best suits um, the problem you are trying to solve or the requirement you've gathered. In the requirement analysis, you know that um, if you've gathered your, um, your requirement, you need to model it. In order to model it, the best approach which you have been using is process mapping. That's the best thing you give um, um, a, a, a visual illustration of the process. So we need to use process map. Process map can be flow charts. Can you use flow chart, <coughs> flow chart as well? It's the same thing. To map it, we've seen how process map works during the early uh, stage of this um, business analysis when we are demonstrating about the problem the housing um, real estate families are having with their tenants about boiling uh, point we use a um, process map to map out the current state uh, the future states and the gap analysis. So in this regard, what we are going to use is, um, let's say process mapping. But there are so many other techniques which you can use. It all boils down to the kind of uh, um, requirement you've gathered. But mostly the first thing you need to do is to map out the current state, the requirements you gather. Is when you map it out, then you start looking at it, looking at the gap in the system, areas that need to be sorted out. 
So we need to, uh, we've identified that there is need to use a um, process mapping. The other, other um, analytical techniques are something have um, a fishbone diagram. Fishbone diagram is mainly used uh, for root cause analysis. Yeah, these are some of the um, techniques we have. We have a um, CPOC map. They all, uh, CPOC map is still a process map. We have a value stream map. So these are some of the, the processes you can use uh, to map out your, uh, your current um, state. Then the next thing after mapping out your current state, the next thing is to verify requirement. Ensure that a set of requirements or design has been uh, developed in enough detail to be used uh, to be uh, usable by a particular stakeholder. Is internally consistent and is of high uh, quality. These requirements you need to verify, just like I said, with the stakeholders. Every, every requirement you are mapping out, every stage you take in requirements, every deliverable during requirement analysis, you need to work with your stakeholders to verify it. Verifying and validating, after verifying, you then validate it. Validating means um, them approving it. So that's the ensure that the set of requirements or design deliver business value and supports the organizational goals and objectives. So you need to validate because at this point, as you're analyzing requirements, anyone that uh, is being approved will go down uh, to high level requirement. Yeah, it becomes uh, a high level requirement. It becomes a document. It becomes a usable uh, document. So that's why you have to analyze them. So then after analysis and the validation, after analysis, um, I mean, uh, the, after modeling the, the, the requirement, verifying the requirement, and then validating the requirement. The next thing is to define the requirement architecture. This is when you decide the architectural design of the requirement. How is it going to be? So architectural design here, just like a, a building design, it means you need to start designing um the solution kind of is a pre -de designing of the solution because you cannot design the solution until you finish uh, 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 this uh, uh, at this stage you need to understand the architecture of the of the solution that's why we explore in details, how the, 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 the solution is going to be. As we move on, we are going to look at the, the way we design architecture, like you mean to, by then you look at the, the requirements, that's when we start breaking it down from high level requirement, that is epic list, to user stories, you start breaking it down. And then you start mapping out small, like every user story, you design the acceptance criteria, how, what is the acceptance criteria that it requires to meet uh, before the, uh, the requirements can be accepted. So all these things are part of the, is part of the design. And then if there is, um, if for instance, it's, uh, it's um, um, a web solution that requires uh, interface. 
like user interface, you need to, to wireframe all those uh, user interface, how, is, uh, how the users are going to, to navigate from one screen to the other. Like in a website, you can see a website have so many pages. So you need to design all those wireframe, all those uh, um, pages in a wireframe, how they are going to look. And then it, uh, it depends on the solution. You can equally mock, mock, uh, call it uh, mock-up, either wireframe or mock-up. They are almost the same thing, but it's a, a way of designing it for the developers to see how it looks before they start the actual coding. So after the, the defining the, the solution, I want you to, to see this define most of the time in business analysis, the, use, the term we use is define. But when we talk about define, we mean design. Define and design. So when you are divide, defining, you are designing it, you know, in details, we are breaking it down. After defining the solution, then analyze potential values and recommend solution. By the time you finish designing everything, exploring and breaking it down the way it should be, uh, looking at the acceptance criteria and everything, then it's time to then recommend the, the solution for the stakeholders. At this point, you need to um, look at all the possible solutions and the value uh, you can get from all of them. So you need to look at it potentially and then um, compare each solution, compare each solution looking at um, some of the uh, constraints within the project charter. Some of these constraints, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the time value, the, the timeline, the budget. So it's one thing you need to look at before you recommend the solution. A solution can be very good, but your company or your organization might not be able to afford it. So you need to look at the one they can afford. That's the one you are going to um, recommend for them. The solution uh, might be very good and it might be within the, the budget, but looking at the time it's going to take to implement that particular solution. If you are working on a CIS, uh, most timeline and you, you you seen that technically it's going to take one year to to produce that software for the company then you better recommend the one that will um they can uh, that can be implemented within uh six months so these are the way you look at um this uh, requirement uh during requirement analysis. <clears throat> when we are going to um, look at the techniques in requirement analysis, that is when we are going to be looking at how we design, how the, in details, how every technique um, works within a requirement analysis. Looking at the map here, you, you see um, what comes first, what you do at any point in time during your requirement analysis. You see what input you need to make and you see the output, what you are going to get within every task. So if you are not getting um getting the outputs 
then you know you are doing something wrong. So, and you cannot jump uh, one um, stage to another stage. So you have to follow it in order to get all the uh, output you require in order to, to deliver a solution. Like here, it is specify and model requirement. After then, you verify requirement. After then, you validate requirement. After then, you define requirement architecture. After then, you define the um, design options, analyze potential values, and recommend solution. And down here, you see all the outputs you need to get. And then when we've done this analysis, requirement analysis, then the next thing is uh, we start evaluating the solution. It's going to be uh, on its own, a, a topic on its own. That's why um, some people can merge it uh, with the requirement analysis that I, when you do a requirement analysis, you can uh, evaluate solution at the same time. But I decided that it's better uh, based on our reference point to, to evaluate solution on ISO, treat it as a, a different topic because it's very, very important to evaluate solution because every solution you've identified now for, for the organization or you, you are recommending, you should be sure. Because the organization, it might take time to change solution. Any solution you are implementing at this point in time might take time. So you might not um, have time to go back. Again. So it's time to, to give any, every solution that you are recommending thorough examination. The first thing is a measure solution performance. All the solution you are selecting because you are not going to select one solution. You are not going to select one software. If it's a software that you're looking, you need to give company options to choose. Although when you are making your options, you yourself, you have to, um, prioritize all the solution. You might tell them that this is a five, we have a, a four options. And uh, number one is the one you choose. But if they think they cannot afford number one or for one reason or the other, they don't want number one. Number two is the next in line. If they don't want number two, number three is the next line. If they don't want number three, number four is the next. That's how you prioritize it based on their performances what they can do for the organization, their, their price, I mean, their cost, and how well efficient they are. Determine the most appropriate way to assess the performance of a solution, including how it aligns with enterprise goals and objective. Just like I was telling you people about Gartner, at this point, you need to look at Gartner's analysis because you might not have enough knowledge uh, on your own. So you need to look at authority within every solution. Gartner have got a way to um, assess all the solution based on vendor rating, based on uh, what the customer has been uh, talking about the solution. So they have a way of rating every solution. If you are analyzing solution, you are planning to choose a CRM solution for your company. Looking at the uh, Gartner, Gartner will tell you the top four um, vendors. And then it will give you a comparative analysis of all the uh, the solution. You look at it and then it will help you to make informed decision about which one um, 
you are going to choose. Within that area, there are so many, you can use a, a performance measure to analyze, examine the information regarding performance of a solution in order to understand the value it delivers to the enterprise or to stakeholders. Gartner gives you all these analysis. You know, assess solution limitation. These are what the solution can do. What are their limits? Gartner will help you to, to know all these things. So I think at, this, uh, at some point, we we'll need to visit a, a Gartner, Gartner website so that we'll be seeing all these things I'm talking about, how Gartner arranges, um, help you to organize all these things. So assess enterprise limitation. Investigate issues outside the scope of the a solution that may be preventing the enterprise from realizing the full value that the solution is capable. So these are still the limitations. You need to look at all the limitations. We are talking about limitation. Is um some solution can look so um so trendy, so comfy, and so posh, but looking at it. Uh, technically, it might not be scalable. It might not be scalable because at this point in time, you might, you might be working for a startup that's um, just uh, their they are, they are staff base, just maybe within uh, 50 people. What of, and they are looking for a solution um, that will help them to manage their, uh, their human resources. And then because of that, you are looking at a solution, you just recommend a solution that can handle 50 people. What if this uh, startup all of a sudden blow up and become a multinational? You start running around to go and start looking for another solution because once they are start growing, they start employing more people, they start more. So you need a solution whereby as they are growing, they can still expand. As they are growing, they can still expand. Uh, or use a um, uh, different license of the solution. They might like the solution might have a, a premium uh, good. Uh, from there, if, if they are growing, they can keep on taking a, a, a better license that will suit their need within the vendor. Um, management so these are the limitations you need to look at you might be uh, operating in a country but all of a sudden your, your product might just become go global so you, you need to look at global aspects of the organization not just within, not just local, you, know, you don't need to just look at the local market. So these are some of the limitations you need to look at so that if the company grows, they will be able to have uh, enough uh, capacity to contain their growth. So recommend action to increase solution value. These are um, part of the things I've just um, to say now about increasing capacity. So these are the things you need to, to look at when you are evaluating solution. You're looking at the map, you start, you measure um, solution performance, you analyze the uh, performance uh, measure, assess solution limitation, assess enterprise limitation, recommend action to increase solution value. These are the key points you need to take into cognizance when evaluating solution. So after then you've um, 
done your requirement analysis and you've analyzed the solution, then we have a requirement management life cycle. You know, requirement is a life wire is is there forever for the company as long as the company is um, is operating their requirements will continue to be there and we continue to manage uh, the requirements so we have um, according to requirement management life cycle we have a, a requirement traceability you trace requirement, analyze and maintain the relationship between requirements, design, solution component, and other work product for impact analysis, coverage, and allocation. You need to uh, look at their relationship and then how do you manage them? Because someone, so many of all these things might be related. If, if, if they, they, they need to be together, if they break it as a chain, if they are like a, any break in the, in the chain, it becomes a problem. So you need to look at the, the traceability of managing all these uh, requirements. Then you need to maintain requirements, ensure that requirement and design are accurate and uh, current throughout their life cycle and the facilitate reuse where appropriate. This is a situation whereby you need to make sure that every requirement is updated all the time. The requirement is a, is a, a piece of software. So it has to be updated. It is a functionality in a software that need to be updated, need to be maintained for it to work. At times it can be reused. So these are the things about requirements. So you, as a for instance, let's use um, a car, for instance. A tire is a requirement in a car. A tire need to be um, uh, maintained all the time. As long as that car is uh, alive, you need to be making sure that it's uh, maintained. At times, you can uh, uh, use one tire. You can even remove the, the back tire and put it in front tire. At times, you can remove the front tire. You same thing as requirement. That's a requirement to reuse. The same requirement. You can fix it. Look at where a particular requirement can be fixed, can fit in within the whole system. That's um, when, when, uh, what we talk about uh, um, requirement re reuse and management. Then we prioritize our requirements. It's good to um, we'll talk about uh, prioritization. You always prioritize your requirements in the order of value, urgency, risk associated with them. It's very, very important to, to, to make sure that so that you make uh, the mistake of uh, uh, giving the wrong uh, uh, requirement, the wrong rating or the wrong uh, priority. You always need to keep uh, prioritizing. If, if, the, if the importance of a requirement change, which you need to work with the, the, the stakeholder, then you need to reprioritize the requirements. At times, something might be the number one, and all of a sudden, uh, another issue might come up and become the other of the day. So you need to keep, that's why you keep on maintaining and reprioritizing the requirement as the, li as the requirement is a, li is a continuous process. That's what we call it a life cycle. Then assess requirement change, like just what I said. Requirement can change, so you need to evaluate new and changing stakeholders' requirement to determine if they need to be acted or uh, to be acted on within the scope of the change. So, like I said, 
requirement can change. Their priority can change. Their importance can change. So that's why you keep on monitoring, managing their importance uh, within the organization. Approve requirements. Work with stakeholders involved in the governance process to reach approval and agreement on requirement and design. In every stage of your uh, work, not just the requirement uh, analysis or requirement management, you need to always validate a deliverable. It applies to requirement as well. Every step you take, you keep on validating. Why this is important is that you as a business analyst, if there's something goes wrong, you need to show that there is an approval for every step you take. It will help you to cover your own back. And secondly, is of the, uh, the highest that you show that you are, you are managing re your requirements or your project with higher standard. That nobody can call you anytime. This is the best practice. So if anything happened in the organization and the auditors or the quality assurance uh, personnel are looking, they will look at how are you managing your requirement? Are you just doing your job on a uh, loan? Do you need to, are you carrying people along? Are you validating your requirements? Are you getting approval? Is there, is there, what you are doing, is it, is it uh, authorized? Because after this, uh, you might get uh, a big job. You might find yourself in NMPC. You might find yourself in um, Chevron. Or you might find yourself in um, all these big, big organizations where you need to always cover your ass. So it's good to always validate every action you take as a business analyst. Before you document any, doc, any, any of your um, deliverable, not only requirement, make sure you get appropriate validation. After all the requirement analysis, you've analyzed your requirements and um, you choose a solution and um, you validated the solution, the, the management have approved the solution for you. Then the next thing is to go into requirement design. All these issues we'll be talking about, like uh, from gathering requirements, analyzing requirements, uh, requirement evaluation, and uh, requirement uh, management life cycle. All these activities belongs under business, business analysis. It's the duty of the business, business analysts to do or cover all these areas. Now, but when we are stepping into design, that's where a technical business analyst comes in. Because now it's a more of technicals. Everything is now more of a bit of trying to, we are moving away from layman's uh, world in business analysis to uh, technical world. Now trying to transform business requirements because all these things you'll be gathering all this while is a business requirement. Now you've gathered the business requirements, analyze it and uh, it becomes a high level requirement. Then the next thing is to transform that high level requirements into technical requirements. Technical requirements that this, the, the developers will now start consuming. 
consuming it in the sense that they'll start working on it and then start transforming it into softwares. And that's how that is the stage and that's how it works. So one person can do all those things, but in large organization where there is a high um, a kind of um, breakdown in um, labor, you might find yourself doing the business uh, requirement and another business analyst might be doing a technical requirement. This is the stage. So you know the stage, you are moving to another stage. So this at this stage we're moving into technical BA rule. And the first thing you do is uh, looking at the the diagram. What do I want? Now you've got the requirements. Is now on high level requirements. It's now for you to start designing the solution. So these are the things um, uh, you need to do. You start breaking it down into um, user stories and the uh, acceptance criteria. You start sketching. So view um, six month data across multiple organizational units in a single view. I'm giving like what I'm seeing, uh, what I'm, I'm reading here is like a scenario, what you are going to do. For instance, is, um, if it's uh, a data, a safe data, as a business analyst, you need to sketch. What are you going to do? What I'm doing here is a scenario base. So for instance, they say the requirements say view six months sales data across multiple organizational units in a single view. In order to do it, you need to sketch. You need to sketch it. Um, kind of a dashboard and that's what you need to use to do the sketch is a uh, uh, like a visio to to map out the sketch you need to use visio to draw the sketch like flowchart they have the capacity to help you draw all the sketch we have not treated about sketch drawing but we'll come to that when we're going to look at um, uh, use case diagram. Another scenario here is a uh, reduced amount of time required to pick and pack customer order. Is a requirement. Technically, how do you design it? You use process map to map it out. Another area is uh, record and assess medical patient's history. This is a requirement, it's a high level requirement. How do you design it here? You need to use a, a mock-up, a wireframe to design it in um, using uh, tools like the uh, Lucid chart or visio or draw.io. Develop business strategy, goal, and objective for a new business. What is the, uh, the design you need at this point? Business capability model. Business capability model, we need to look at it later. So it's a bit um, out of this, uh, uh, out of our scope for now, but I'll still look at it. Provide information in English and French. How are you going to design this particular requirement? You use prototype 
with uh, text display in English and French. So these are how a scenario based, how you can design a requirement. I use different scenario here to do that. So, and looking at the, the life cycle, first thing is a business requirement. What do I want? The second one is a stakeholder requirement. What are the need of the stakeholder? The third one is solution requirement. What do I want in that solution? We need to design it. The next thing is a transition requirement. What are the condition to transit from one um, stage to another? What are the conditions to transit from the current state to the desired state or the target state? These are how it works in a cycle. Call it a, a requirement design life cycle. Now, we are going to look at business analysis um, techniques. This is the time we will need to start looking into details of how we are going to use these techniques to analyze our requirements. From gathering our requirements to analyzing our requirement and executing the project and closing the project. What are the techniques involved? These are the key area now. These are the tools you need to understand. All this uh, uh, grammar we'll be talking about, blah, 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 requirement. This is the time you need to start doing the real job. Keeping, you, you, uh, 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 you get your hands dirty. All these tools, this is time you start using it. We break it down into four stages within our project life cycle to make it easy for you. You've known about, uh, we've done a project uh, life cycle during the project management where we break our project into four stages, initiate stage, define stage, execute and closure stage. At initiate stage, that is when we, um, we need to identify and manage our stakeholders. In business analysis, you need to do that. And to do that, you need to use a RACI matrix. You know about RACI matrix already. You have a stakeholder analysis. I've uh, taught to people about stakeholder analysis in um, uh, uh, project uh, management. You still need to look at it. We equally need a personal analysis. That is how these are the tools you need to use, the techniques you need to use to manage uh, your stakeholders. Then within the initial stage still, requirement elicitation, that's when you have to gather your requirements. In gathering your requirement, there's a lot of techniques. We have interview, we have observation, we have workshop, we have a survey and questionnaire. The one we use yesterday is a survey and questionnaire. When I was um, doing my requirement um, gathering on uh, raw mount. The requirement analysis. During requirement analysis, which is within the initial stage, you need to use a process analysis, process modeling, data modeling, root cause analysis, gap analysis, 
prioritizations through Moscow analysis and business case. Then, under solution evaluation, we need a brainstorming and we need a vendor assessment and we need a SWOT analysis. We are going to treat all these things one by one. Then we have a defined stage, that is solution design. That is requirement design. That's where you have to start with a backlog management, user story, acceptance criteria, evaluation criteria, estimation, use cases and test cases. Then when we come to execute stage, we use Scrum event management with um, sprint planning, daily stand-up, sprint demo, and the sprint retrospective. Then at the closure stage, we use um, as a project uh, closure document, and it contains client acceptance form, lesson learned document, uh, lesson learned reports, and the post implementation review and closure report. These are the techniques you need to use at every point in, a, in managing your project as a business analyst, both in requirement gathering, requirement analysis, requirement evaluation, implement, uh, um, solution execution and closure. This is how you do it. And um, looking at the uh, requirement uh, stakeholder management, we have to start from stakeholder management. We've done this before. In stakeholder management, you have communication plan. We have RACI metrics. We have power interest um, grid. Then we have a stakeholder analysis document. Now we need to look at, the first thing we need to look at is RACI. This is a um, RACI matrix. You've done something like this before. I've shown you people uh, this RACI matrix before uh, during uh, stakeholder management. That's how you understand your stakeholders the people you work with, their role, their responsibilities, and everybody needs to have it. This R in orange color means responsible. Who is responsible for doing this? This A means accountable. Who is accountable? This C means consulted. Who should be consulted? You need to consult somebody that is mean to be consulted when um, undertaking any particular rule or deliverable. This I here means inform. Who need to be informed? Here means uh, uh, R, A. Here means responsible and accountable. Who is responsible and accountable? Some people need to be responsible. They are equally still accountable. CI means consulted and informed, and SA means support. So that is it. For instance, looking at these um, deliverables or activities, you see customer complaint reduction. In applying to, 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 to solve the problem of uh, uh, customers complain to reduce the co customer's complaint um, in this uh, project. So whom do you need to, uh, who is accounted, accountable for this particular deliverable? You can see here is the Adams and Adams is the sponsor, is accountable. 
Then you look at see here who need to be consulted. You see Peter need to be consulted. Then who need to be informed? Then Sarah need to be informed. Who need to be um, uh, consulted as well? Here you see Zachariah need to be consulted. And who is responsible? Half is responsible for this uh, deliverable. And with that, after all these things, you know which one where you are, which one you are responsible for, and whom you need to consult, who is accountable. Who is an accountable person is the person that you that need to validate this um, deliverable when you finish. If you are like um, Harvey is responsible in trying to implement this uh, particular deliverable, uh, Harvey needs to consult Zakaria, Harry needs to consult Peter, Harry needs to inform Sarah, and at the end of the day, Harry needs to take this um, deliverable to Adam for validation. And that's how you use racing matrix. That's how racing matrix help you to manage your project very well. Then, in order to understand the power, every stakeholder, how important they are, you need to use uh, this uh, power metrics. Need to use this uh, power matrix. The power matrix is you can see is a diagram, is a uh, is a, a bit uh, self explanatory. You can see here power that requires the kind the amount of power this the every stakeholder within this map is holding. And here is interest. This is the level of interest every stakeholder he in, on this map is having on this project. Now, you can uh, uh, see that um, Adam, the CFO and the procurement, they have high power in this project, but they don't have uh, much interest. They have low interest. You can see they belong, to, their interest is low. What does that mean? They can, they can mess you up and they don't care because they don't have interest. So these kind of people need to be very, very careful with them because they can mess you up and uh, they don't feel, they won't feel the pain. Looking at Zakaria and Sami, they are on top, meaning that they have high power as well. And going downstairs, you can see, they still have high interest. These people, uh, people, you really need to work with them as well, very closely, because they have, they have, they might be the people that uh, are the sponsor of this uh, project. So their interest is very high. So you need to work very closely with them, make them happy, try to understand their requirement, their need, because they have high interest in this project and they have high power. Then here, you can look at this, the technician, they have low power and they have low interest. All they want is uh, for them to do their job and get them paid. Whether the, the company is growing or not growing, they might just be contracted for maybe one week, two weeks to come and uh, fix uh, boiling, a boiler 
and that is where they are on. So they don't even know much about the company. You still need to, to work with them because they are the technician. Then people like the, the Sarah, um, supervisor or operator, at times, people at this uh, high interest might be uh, vendors as well. Let us look at it from that side as well. Does vendor like, for instance, Microsoft, they are planning to sell you Dynamics 365. They are vendors, so they, are have, they have high interest because they want to sell market. They want to do anything to make sure they sell their market. You need to consider them. You need to work with them. They don't have any, they don't have much power. So they are just, uh, their marketing unit might just be giving you call all the time. Uh, have you people taking decision? Uh, because they know you are consulting other vendors. So they want to make sure that uh, you consider them. Now we we'll look at the stakeholder um, involvement worksheets, involvement planning uh, worksheets, and communication worksheets. We've treated this before. This is um, where you, 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 you capture the role and the involvement of the stakeholders. How are they involved in the, in the project? You need to, to indicate their power, like from the power we, after doing, from the inter power grid, you need to pick where they belong and still uh, put it here and their interest and supportive nature, are they supportive or are they not? You need to, so that you should be monitoring it here. Then involvement planning worksheet. After plotting their, this involvement worksheet, then you need to um, work on their involvement. How do you want them to involve? You need to look at where they are at the moment and where you want them to be. This will help you to understand if a stakeholder is difficult or not. For instance, if the stakeholder is here on a current involvement work plan and you want a particular stakeholder to be involved, this is your desire. How do you want them to involve? If they are not meeting the level of involvement in where you want them, in this your desired state, it means something is fishy. You need to know why they are not uh, involved to the level they are supposed to be. This should help you as an indicator to monitor who is a difficult or who is not difficult or where you are having problem in managing stakeholder. So you have to look at the level of desired, the desired level of involvement to make sure that they are meeting the desired level. And then communication worksheets, is a, that is a communication plan. This will help you to plan how you communicate with your stakeholder. Is the stakeholder, who is the stakeholder? This is the stakeholder. Maybe the name, then who? Project manager. How often do you communicate with this particular stakeholder? Once every week. How do you communicate phone? Yes or no? No, you don't communicate with phone. You communicate with email, yes. Feedback log here, yeah. how often? Anytime, so this is how you, anytime you communicate with them, you need to feed, you need to write your feedback here. 
Maybe, for instance, um, every week, at the end of every week, maybe every Friday, you need to provide reports about the, the project um, kind of a status report. After the report, which you presented to the, uh, the particular stakeholder, maybe the senior manager or the lead project, uh, the lead business analyst, if they are happy with your deliverable, you need to indicate here, yes, they are happy or the, 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 the particular, this thing you deliver, the particular requirement validated, you need to show that it's validated or not validated or rejected. You need to show the feedback here so that you know what is going on. Another thing is that when the um, quality assurance person want to audit what you are doing, they need to see what you are, you are doing. That's another whole reason why all these documents, you have to use them. You have to document everything you are using, doing. Because you are not just working uh, that's like that. At the end of the day, somebody needs to audit your document. They need to look at what you are doing. That is the role of the QAs, quality assurance personnel. Then we are still in um, uh, stakeholder management. And this is um, personal analysis. You need to, when you are looking at stakeholders, you need to um, look at their, their political, um, their level of uh, political ex exposure, the economical, <clears throat> overall economic situation, the threat of uh, consumer. Then you need to look at uh, social, um activity the lifestyle of a stakeholder you need to look at this technological um awareness or the technological uh, involvement of any uh, stakeholder is here a tech savvy where 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 does he belong in terms of technology then you need to look at legal implication of a stakeholder you are dealing with. And then you need to look at the environmental factors. So these are the way you need to equally use to, to manage stakeholder. You know? But most of the time, I don't use this uh, personal analysis. Yeah, I just bringing it because we didn't uh, look at it in um, in project management, and it's a very important uh, technique. Uh, some organizations use it, some don't use it, but I've not used it in a long while. But it's still a technique in the project uh, stakeholder management. Then when you are managing stakeholders, when you finish uh, managing stakeholders, then the next thing we need to look at is um, requirement elicitation. You have um, done your stakeholder analysis, you understand the power of every stakeholder and their level of involvement and uh, who is accountable, who is... Uh, and document everything and uh, do your communication plan. Then this is time to start engaging the stakeholders. The first thing is to conduct interview. There is a stakeholder uh, elicit, um, requirement elicitation or requirement gathering. Is a requirement gathering technique is the most used requirement gathering technique. That is interview. So if you are trying to understand or to gather the current states or the future states 
or the challenges the stakeholders are facing after understanding the problem. And the interview is one of the most important techniques to use in requirement gathering. It can be through workshop, a still interview. If you are doing this at workshop, it's still interview. Is this one-on-one, -on -one, it's still interview. It's very, very important. So how to conduct an interview? The first thing to do while trying to conduct an interview is start by clearly define the purpose of the interview. You need to define the purpose of the interview to the stakeholder while you are, conduct uh, while you are uh, conducting the interview. Don't assume that the stakeholder, although you might know, but don't assume the stakeholder knows what you need to clearly define, even in written uh, form, why you are conducting this interview. This is what you do during the is a, a way of plan. You need to plan your interview. That is a planning. Define the purpose. Then identify the target target responded for the interview. You need to identify the people, not everybody. So you, you have to identify the people you need to interview. You don't interview everybody in the organization. Then you prepare a list of questions prior to the interview. Decide type of uh, interview uh, you will use. Decide data capturing method. Is it form? Is it questionnaire? Is it taking notes? You need to decide. Then when you have decided all this method you are going to use for this interview, then the next thing you have to do is to conduct the interview. You no, know, contact the respondent before the interview. Let them know that uh, the interview is holding on so 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 day, and they give them a date. You see, if you are going to conduct the interview through video conferencing, you need to um, make sure that uh, you send them the login details for the, just like Zoom, you need to sh share the, the Zoom detail with them and the date the interview is going to be so that they will be aware. You don't, you don't just um, call them, uh, where I'm supposed to be having an interview with you today. No, you need to pre-inform them before the interview. Then before the interview, you need to do a pilot interview to refine the questions and interview process on your own. You need to refine, the, do a pilot this uh, interview. This will help you to refine and make sure that uh, the question you are using maybe uh, is, uh, is highly refined and is uh, straight to the point. Then conduct the interview at the scheduled date and time. Let the question be structured. but adapt to a uh, discussion as needed. It, it needs to be a discussion. Let it be uh, a, a more of a discussion uh, so that um, the, the respondent will be free to flow. Don't make it, um, if it's possible, don't uh, create a friendly at atmosphere during the interview. Take notes or record the interview in order to capture the con uh, conversation. Just like what we are doing here, we are recording this, uh, our, our meeting. That's how you do it. You, as either you are writing, taking a note, or you are recording it like this, so that after the interview, you go back and revisit your notes, and uh, or your video, which you recorded, that is where you are going to extract all the requirements 
from the recorded uh, or the notes uh, you've taken. Let the question um, listen, don't interrupt. Be more of a listener. When uh, a respondent is, uh, is uh, talking, don't interrupt. Let the person finish before you ask um, another question. At times it's good to ask the question, uh, the, the responding, they are done with the question before you, uh, you ask the next uh, question. And uh, uh, try to, <clears throat> in as much as you are trying to make the person feel comfortable, be aware of uh, boundaries. So don't make it so, um, so casual so that you, you start uh, going, uh, don't use unnecessary jokes. That's what I mean. Before completing the interview, ask the respondent for additional input or comments. You need to ask them if they have a question. Then if they don't have a question, then it's the, you, you, you end your interview. And then you take time to document important ideas and findings as soon, as soon after completing the interview. It's better to document your ideas immediately. So immediately after interview, it's, it's better to just prepare your interview. Analyze your interview and then document them. This one, after documenting the interview, there is a time you, uh, you send it back to the, uh, the stakeholder, the people that, all the people that uh, participated in the interview. You need to send back a copy of the, uh, the notes or the, the requirements if you, you gathered or you generated during the interview for them to validate. So that everybody will make sure, if all of them need to validate uh, that this is the input they make. At times you might send it back and they'll tell you that this is not what I said. So it does time to make correction. So these are the list. So if you want to make interview now, you will say you don't know what to do. I've given you a comprehensive list of um, how you are going to um, have an interview. It's very, very important because so many people uh, don't know how to conduct an interview in a, in a very structured manner. But with this list I've given you here, you are good to go with uh, any kind of interview you want to uh, facilitate. Now, you've, um, you've got out the, um, your requirement, uh, you've conducted your interview, but there's um, other things uh, you need to add. And uh, these are going to be the, the rules when writing your questionnaires. I put it here because it's very, very important. As you can see, we've just finished discussing about how to conduct interview here. But here yeah, you need to uh, basically understand the basic rules while um, drafting your questionnaire. Number one is avoid making assumption about the respondent. Use short questionnaires. Long questionnaire will result in decreasing participation. Let your questionnaire, let the, the, the question be very brief and uh, simple, direct to the, go straight to the point. Don't start writing long, the, long grammar. Use clear, easily understandable, 
wording. As a use simple English, don't use a high level or big vocabulary. Use positive statement and avoid asking emotional question. When you are um, uh, asking a, a question, don't go and start asking um, uh, your question, your, your respondent about the uh, about their personal life, about their relationship. Is not acceptable. These are boundaries you don't need to cross. So don't use an emotional question. Try to make it as official as possible. Questions should not be biased or leading to the participants uh, towards an answer. So you must not be biased or uh, don't push your question that like you want to get a particular answer. When you are pushing your question, like if you are asking me a question about uh, their interest, about three or four different uh, vendors or softwares, don't try to make your vendor feel like uh, you, are, you are favoring a, a particular vendor, um, you, you are responding, feel like you are favoring a, a particular vendor or you are favoring a particular software or product. Try to be straightforward. Don't be biased. If you're asking uh, which, uh, 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 for instance, you want to ask uh, which um, CRM software do you think is the best for the organization, just go like, don't, don't ask, uh, you know, that the Microsoft is a good software. Do you think is the best one? Don't, you are becoming biased. Remember to include uh, contextual questions. These are areas um, where you, at times if you, they, they need to type or make an input, that's what it means here. Avoid questioning more than one question uh, per item. So you try as much as you can not to repeat any question. And the questionnaire with a broad open-ended question, such as, is there anything else you would like to see? That's how uh, you, you, you write a good uh, questionnaire. With this will help you to be able to draft a good question uh, for your interview. It's very simple, it's very clear. So you can use it like this. Now you have um, gather the requirement. For instance, say we've, we've treated uh, how to uh, do your uh, interview to gather a requirement and the kind of questions you need to, to use. Let's assume you have done that and use that to gather a requirement. And then the next thing is to, to do your requirement um, analysis. And uh, the first thing we need to look at is the process analysis. Process analysis assess a process for its efficiency and effectiveness, as well as its ability to identify opportunity for change. That's uh, what uh, process analysis does. Process analysis use various purposes, including recommending a more effective, efficient or effective process, like determining the gap between the current and the future state 
of the process. Understanding factors to be used, uh, to be included in contract negotiation. Understanding how data and technology are used in process. Analyzing the impact of a pending change to a process. The framework methodology that focus on uh, process analysis. Uh, the framework was um, just like before, with a six sigma and the lane. These are the process that mostly be uh, used in a uh, process analysis. Is either they use it to, to look at the um, process improvement, you are trying to improve the process. Um, that's mainly using Six Sigma or reduce the, the waste, still imp improvement in the, in the process. That's mainly what uh, the process analysis uh, is all about. And mostly the, the business analyst that specializes in process, they call them uh, process analysts. You have uh, some people specialize only in uh, uh, looking at what is wrong with a particular process. <clears throat> then we're going to look at the, the core techniques in process um, analysis. And uh, here we have uh, process modeling. Process model can be used to describe the contents of the solution or part of the solution describe what actually happened or is desired to happen during the process. Provide an understanding, understandable description of a sequence of activities to an external observer. Provide visual to a company, a text description, and provide a basis for process analysis. So all this grammar here is uh, talking about uh, looking at the, uh, at the, the current state of a process, and then looking at the, um, the future state of a process, and they're looking at they're trying to determine the gap within the process. That's all about, that's the major thing in process analysis. And we have been talking about it all this while. So we need to start looking at how this process is being done in real time. And they I will bring us to our first analogy, uh, which is um, the difficulties the real estate company we are facing, trying to fix a, a boiler, a default boiler. Within the uh, within their client, their clients. So, this is a process model. This is a process map. So, when you've gathered your requirements, the next thing you need to do is to map out the requirements you've gathered, like this in a process map. And what you are going to use to map out the requirement is um, uh, lucid charts, visual or 
um, draw.io. What they are called is a unified modeling language. This is a language as you are seeing it. Let me put it here. So that is what they call UML, the fine modeling language. So that is the what you are using to map out this process map. And you can, <coughs> you can do that using tools like Visio, Draw.io, and Lucid Chat. You've seen that, you've seen this map already when we are starting. This is a um, current state the way they are doing their, their business and they're, they're having problems. So then, then look, let's look at the gap analysis. When you map out the, the, first, the process, the, the assist process, the next thing is to look at the gap. You start analyzing the gap in the system, looking at Areas things are not done well. That is, these are the gap or area that needs improvement. This is the gap. Is the area you need to remove or area what you need to add. These are the gap missing in the system. So at this point, we've identified that the in order to solve our problem, we need to remove some of these areas that are not working, that are supposed to be there. It's a waste of time. So. That is the gap analysis. We need to remove them. And when we remove them, then we have another process because some area we have removed some processes within this uh, activity. So now we have removed them. It's bringing us to um, the desired state, that is to be the target state. These are what we are looking at. Where um, we've been able to solve the problem after the gap analysis. And this is what the organization is looking at. What This is what they, uh, they, they employ you as a business analyst to help them um, get at. So this is uh, to be. So this is the technique in process mapping. Ranging from requirement, um, requirement elicitation, where you gather the requirement. After gathering the requirement, then you map out the requirements, then you analyze the requirements, then you get the high level requirement. So this is called high level requirement, it's called to be, it's called target state, it's called high level requirement. So a, a, you can hear a lot of names. So for instance, if you if you're an interview, they ask you, how do you get your high level requirement? So you know, is how do you get your to be? To get your high level requirement, you first need to gather your, uh, do your, Requirement gathering, map out the requirement gather uh, the requirement you've gathered. Do your gap analysis, and then you get your high level requirement. So that is high level requirement. So, and um, this is going to be our first assignment. This is going to be our first assignment. Um, for the week. 
you need to map out this um, assist, map out gap analysis, and uh, map out to be. So do you think you can do this? I think uh, we're... Yes, sir, we can do it. Yes, sir, we can do it, though. Yes, sir, so, we can. So this is the time you start getting your hand dirty. The real work have started. So, and I think I need to stop here for tonight. Like what will remain here is still the same thing. It's, they are process, they are different process map. Like now, this one is a, still a process map. Um, talking about uh, a particular problem. This is a process handling. Customers complain. It's still a process map. Now you receive complaint, you record complaint, you communicate internally, you get your facts, analyze the complaint, you prepare um, analysis reports, send analysis report to customer, offer solution, or uh, compensate for any loss. Then you close the complaint internally display analysis uh, report meet to review complaint this is a process this is equally a process a process of how to check out in a hotel so this is a description these are different way of doing process mapping you can do it in different way the all process mapping, mapping out the assays and then doing their gap analysis. They are solving problems. It's the same thing with this uh, number, this, uh, but it's different technique, different way of mapping out the processes. So, I won't go beyond uh, this process mapping process modeling this night. Like, um, I'm tempted to go into root, root cause analysis, but I don't want to uh, treat it. Uh, uh, I want to treat it in details. I want to give it enough time because root cause analysis is very important. And again, this uh, gap analysis, I want to us to treat it very well as well. So I need to, I'll leave it for tomorrow because we don't have um, much time. So I'll leave it. Everything we are stopping at process modeling this night. So I'll post all these pictures for you to see as a guide in mapping out your, your processes. You've been using a lucid chart. That's good. But if I may say, try to equally use um, draw.io. I use draw.io to map out these things. So, but if you prefer using lucid charts, it's good. As long as it can give you uh, the map with a swim lens. These are swim lens. Swim lens diagram. So I will leave you to do it. If you try to <coughs> do it and then you, you people cannot do it, then maybe I will then do a live video on that. But first, I want you to do it. That's what we call assignment for you to try it out first.
as time is for you to go and try something out before the, the instructor can teach you how to do it. So, and at this point, I want to take questions. Is our <clears throat> is our head hot? I can do. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah, well done. Yes, sir. I really appreciate your efforts. You. Yes, sir. Can can we make use of this shield to draw this type of thing, sir? What? This shield. Yeah, yeah. This is the number one, but I'm talking about other because uh, this is. Um, if you can afford this or you are using it in your place of work, that, okay, is, sir. that is the idle uh, tool to use. But all oh. these ones I'm talking uh, I'm talking about the free ones. Okay, sir. The okay, ones sir. you don't need to pay. Because I don't want oh. anybody to complain that I can't uh, afford this. That's I what understand. I'm not talking about. If you feel like always this is the number one. Okay. If you can use this, use this. That is number okay. one, but is a paid, is a paid tool. That's why I'm not talking about it because I know some of some of you might not uh, be able to afford it. But if you are working, your organization might give you the ability to, or you as a big boy or a big lady mm -hmm. can afford it. You afford is an investment you are making in your, in your professional life. Okay, all right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and um, the person uh, Galaxy S8 is not a, is not a name. Now. So when you are trying, you always try to put your name. Don't just log in. But let's hear from Galaxy S8. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Uh, my name is Ruth. Okay. Um, sir. Okay. I I want to uh, really get. Are we drawing the exact um? This exact picture you showed us, and um, or we're just using our own terms, our own um, wordings as we make, uh, we just look for a, a, a situation and use this as an example. This, uh, the picture you showed as a background to copy what I, if you can copy what uh, I ask you to copy, copy it, then maybe in future, if you become uh, experienced enough, you can even use the process in your, in your, your, your recipe in cooking, it's a process. You can use anything you want, but first, um, replicate this uh, okay. diagram. Okay, so then again, I was also thinking, the, um, why why do we need to because what, the, what there's a process you showed us and um, you said you, you need to just terminate them because they are not necessary um on the stages i've forgotten or what you said uh, you can just um, uh, delete them so that they will help you uh, move ahead so i'm 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 trying to understand as a, as a business analyst you're the one that will create the the you're, you're the one that will make the mapping do the processes so why don't you just go ahead and um, instead of um doing the mapping and the, you call you now come back to delete uh, some of the processes that are not necessary why don't you at the beginning uh, go ahead and just map out map out the processes and the, and you know just put the stages i have forgotten i wish you can just uh, show us the slide i would have showed okay. you okay. what okay. i meant Okay, I'll show this slide again. Okay. Is this where we are uh, we're talking about um, gap analysis? Exactly, it's a gap analysis. You know, like the landlord they receive and uh, review that the landlord approves. And, you know, so these processes are not necessary. And you, you could just come and delete them 
and just move ahead. Once you delete these three steps, it automatically takes you to uh, uh, plunder went on site visit. Plumber went on site visit to assess files. So I'm saying at the at the to, uh, ice B, that's to be. Why don't we just uh, go ahead and uh, the, the business analyst just go ahead and make map out these steps instead of coming back again to delete the uh, all this uh, process the landlord uh, receives and uh, okay. the rest of them. Okay, listen. Now, yeah, they brought you into an organization as a business analyst. They tell you that we're having a problem. And that this is the problem we're having. The problem they're having is backlogs. There's a lot of backlogs. Customers are calling to complain that it's taking a, lo a long, uh, taking longer time, time to, to fix their boilers. So, and the organization is looking at, now they are complaining that uh, one, it's taking like uh, 15 days for a boiler to be fixed. Uh, which is a long time. Now they are looking at how can they reduce the time or how can they solve this problem? They employ you as a business analyst and their role as a business analyst to come and um, look at the challenges organizations are facing and provide solution. Now they've employed you. The first thing you need to find out is how are they solving this? Uh, how are they um, solving these problems before? How do they um, the process they used to fix customers boil, um, tenant boilers before. And that is a, the person you met in the organization, maybe it's say the help desk officer, when you are gathering your requirement, tells you that this is the way we do it. The first where we identify the, the, the incidents and then we log the incident, then we talk to the, uh, we review the incident, we talk to the landlord, and we follow all these processes. That is how we do it. And to follow all these processes, it takes 15 days. And this 15 days is the amount of time they are not happy with. They, they, they are complaining that it's a lot of time. So now, as a business analyst, you have collected all these requirements that this is how they do it. Then you come. I went back to your office, you, you sit down as a business and you start analyzing it. You say, okay, if it's taking them all this, we need to reduce this to 10 days or to even cut it down to uh, seven days. What are you going to do? Then as a business, you need to start identifying areas that are not much important. Some of these areas are bureaucratic, processes that are just taking unnecessary time. You identify it, I didn't say delete it. I say highlight it here. The wife highlighted my own here in red color. So that when the management are looking at it, they will see the, the waste you've highlighted. You've highlighted the waste of time here. All these red colors is waste of time. You've highlighted. And once they remove this waste of time based on your analysis, it's going to save them five days. So you remove five days from that um, 15 days, and they will have 10 days to deliver. That is a lot of time you save them already. And when you, re you remove it, then you need to come down to map out another uh, process to be. This is now going to be the way they should be doing it. You map out another process. So. This is another process you mapped out. You didn't delete anything. You, this is here, you remove here, but in here is now another a new process of doing things. So that is how you do it. Okay. So there's no way you can just jump in and start mapping out this thing. Okay. Where did you do your work? Where is the gap analysis? So you need to be sequential. You need to first map out the way they are doing it. Then look at the problems, which area can be improve, improved. It can be either you add something or you remove some, but you, know, you need to do a gap analysis. Look at, you need to find out the gap in the system. And from my own gap analysis, I can see that 
All this uh, landlord review, landlord approved, landlord is not yes. necessary. Waste time, yes. It's a waste of time. So, yeah. so in order to save time, let's, once they receive a complaint, they should call the, the, the desk officer or the company should call the plumber immediately. Because when the landlord is uh, giving the properties uh, for, for real estate to manage, they should give them some authority to do some things. So if, if they don't have this kind of authority to do their work, then the landlord should as well just be managing his properties. That's right. So that is it. So they remove all these waste and the landlord himself should be happy because all the time you are calling landlord do this. Landlord, landlord should be should well, be happy you are, you are not this because landlord might just be a medical doctor all the time while in the, in the theater you're calling landlord they, there is emergency some so they so you should give them kind of uh, delegated authority to do their their work very well if you are giving them property to manage for you you should have uh, give them some uh, trust and uh, you know to do their job okay thank you understood yeah. Any more questions? Um, okay, thank you very much, sir. Actually, my own is not a question. I was just like um, trying to say, uh, could it just be said that the, uh, it's important that we know that those are not just mere diagrams, that that's actually a work done, a process just represented in diagram form. Yeah. So it's not just something that you wake up and you delete the one you want to delete and put the one you want to put. Those are the things, this process, because they are the things that actually done the jobs and the works that is done daily. You understand? Yes. So I mean, it's not just mere diagrams that uh, you have to present. You are right. Yeah. The point IK is making here is that, for instance, Let's go back to the diagram. It's very important that everybody understand this. This thing you are looking at now, um, landlord receive and re, um, review, landlord approve, landlord. This is what they have been doing over the years. So it's not just something you can wake up and say, delete. It's a process, it's in their manual. It's in the, it's a work, workplace manual that everybody, this is how we do it. And over the years, if you don't do this like this, if you don't follow, if you don't, landlord don't approve, and there's uh, something get done without the approval of landlord, you can get fired. You can lose your job. So you cannot just wake up and uh, delete it. You need to recommend to the management that these three processes needs to, they need to stop doing things this way. You are recommending, you are not just deleting it. This is the way they are doing their job. For instance, um if you are if you are doing a school runs and uh, you always uh, uh, drop in your your kids uh, they are they are the school is complaining that their children are always coming to school late and what happened is that maybe you pay a cabman or a taxi person to come and uh, take your children to school. Maybe the cabman, before they take the cabman to come and uh, take them to school and the rest of them, these are the time are wasting time. You can actually say, okay, I will boycott this process of cabman coming to my house, pick my children, take them to school. Really in the morning, you, you, all you need to be doing is wake up earlier and you prepare you yourself just go and drop your keys in the school and before you start going to work. Can you see you have bypassed the issue of cab man, save time, save money for your house? 
But the other way around, you have to, uh, if you are waking up by um, six o'clock, this time around, maybe you decide to be waking up 5.30 in order for all of you to prepare on time and be able to, to do the school runs yourself, not delegating it to another person. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, sir. I'm so it's just an analogy for you to understand. So it's a process we are talking about. It's something that applies in uh, our everyday life. So you can use that to be some things that doesn't make sense for us. Okay, now, another analogy I'll give you because this is a very important uh, topic in the business analysis, how to solve problems. I will use uh, this program we are taking now as an example, this program is um, a master's degree program. And on that master's degree, the minimum year you can take this course is one year. That's the minimum. But now we are giving the course in four months. How possible? That's what you ask me. How can I do this in four months? Because during a um, master's degree, there's a lot of unnecessary modules that you, after your master's degree, you will never even talk about it again. And this is what they are using to stuff and make sure they are trying to justify all the money they collect from you. For instance, some of us in the conventional universities, we take four year course. For instance, we are reading the accounting or banking and finance four years. During the accounting and banking and finance, you have to do psychology, you have to do philosophy, you have to do um, legal method, you have to do um, GS101, you have to do just all these things. By the time you graduate, like some of you have gotten a job after you graduate as a banker, you find out that there's, you've never used philosophy, you've never used uh, psychology, you've never used, so all these things, it's what the university use to, to, to keep you for four years and be collecting money from you for four years. But now we've said no, because it's not, it's not solving problems. At the end of the day, people get confused. In order to, to solve the problem, give people what they need to go out and work, what the company will ask them, what they will use to, to do job in the, in the organization. And this is what we've identified and given it to you in four months. But even if other investors, they will give you this thing in four years. Is it not a waste? So we have used this solution to solve big problems. The cost you can do in four years can be given to you in, in four months. Does that make sense? Quite well, sir. Yeah, so I think uh, that will bring us to the end of this uh, tonight's class. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I will share the, uh, the, 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 the images. Thank you, sir. The, Thank you, sir. Yeah, of the assignment you need Thank to you, do. Thank you. Um, uh, good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. We appreciate, sir. All right. Good night. Good night. Rest.